It looks like Sicilian pizza. I'm not Sicilian, I'm Nabilidon. It's not Sicilian, only in the shape. But the recipe is different, it's very light, it's very airy, the crust is delicious, it's terrific. It's our own formula. If you see something with slices on the package and it's not from us, get out your gun and shoot them. They don't belong to us, okay? <laughs> or tell us, I'll do it. <laughs>
Mikel, non-controversial, never has a bad word to say about anybody. Lately has gotten very spicy. I don't know what happened to her, what's got into her. Maybe it's all the personal training and kicking everybody's butt to get them going. But, um, you know, she, she was uh, Cammie and I's firstborn, and um, she doesn't remember this. But, you know, just before I went to prison, when she was like six or seven months old, I couldn't even walk by her without her crying and wanting to jump in my arms. And, you know, leaving her when I first went away was extremely difficult. So, you know, it's all different. So I, I guess I didn't answer your question. I'm trying to back out of that. I mean, I mean <laughs> you know, I, I like them all. I mean, I like all of you. You know that. Okay. We all have different relationships. Th that's true, you know, and I think a lot of you can relate to that. You know, you, those of you who have more than one child, you have different relationships, different things with different kids. You know, like my son Michael, him and I were like oil and water for like seven, eight, nine, ten years. We were at each other all the time. Now he's great. He's finally listened to me, right? Okay. And uh, he's turned out to be a great kid. He's running the slices and doing a great job. My older boy, John, you know, a little bit sad because uh, when I left, you know, he's from my first marriage, and when I left, I was away from him for almost nine years, and that was very tough on him. The separation was tough. When I finally got home, he came right out and spent, you know, uh, many, many years with me, and we're close now. So, you know, it's all different with all your kids. Um, you know, what could I say? But I've been, I've been very fortunate, very blessed. They're all in good shape, and, and I mean really good shape. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean really good shape. I mean, they take care of themselves. So. Um, it's been good, but is that the, that's the most difficult question I'm going to get? No, I mean, Mom told me, be prepared, easy. you're going to get set up here. Start easy. That okay. was an easy one for me, at least, I yeah. think. I don't know. I have a couple. One is just, like, silly. Like, how do you feel? I feel like your, your, uh, your thoughts on this have changed over the last few years or so. But how, what is your idea of alcohol these days? <laughs> I know what it used to be, and I know that it's changed, but I want to see what your response is. How you feel about it well alcohol in terms of you're drinking it all of you in uh, terms of you used to like you used to hardly drink you used to not you i remember one time we went to dinner and you and i ordered a martini and you said what who orders that martinis Sprout. are for alcoholics and now you order martinis all the time so i'm just wondering are you an alcoholic maybe that was my question I <laughs> or, or maybe you're a bad influence on me no um, yeah, well, I, I got to be honest. Yes, I was always uh, pretty much of a hard guy when it came to drinking because I saw people get drunk and, you know, it was never attractive to me and people got in trouble because of it. But I, I have kind of lightened up on that because, as you know, your mother and I, we, we love our wine. We love going up to Napa Valley. And so I've loosened up a bit on that. Um, I have a glass just about every night now. Nothing wrong with it. It's okay. Uh, I happen to like the martini. I never tasted one until you got me into it. But yeah, I enjoy it. But John got you into it. Actually. Uh, yeah, actually, my son John, he got me into it. You know, listen, if you don't drink to excess and it doesn't cloud your judgment or do anything like that, I guess it's okay. We all, listen, we all enjoy our wine Sometimes together. It's fun to cloud your judgment. What's that? Sometimes it's fun, fun to cloud, cloud your judgment. judgment. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but um, so yeah, I guess it, I guess I have loosened up quite a bit, you know, because when we have our wine, it kind of brings us together, and I en I enjoy it. We all we all knock off a couple of bottles, and uh, now watch me get all the comments, you know, ah, you're, you're an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. We we just enjoy it. The rest of us are. We, yeah, just kidding. No, no, no. We we just enjoy it. So yes, I've loosened up a bit, much to everybody's delight, I would say. Okay. One that comes to mind is why are you so against, like, if you're in a relationship, why are you so against the the girlfriend or the wife or the female ever taking care of the boyfriend or the husband? Like, for instance, I remember a while back, um, Alec was like really sick, and so I brought him like chicken noodle soup. <laughs> And you were so bothered by it. <laughs> you sent me like a massive paragraph on how that's ridiculous. You shouldn't need to take him chicken noodle soup. And you were like really <laughs> mad at me for for taking kiss. So I want to know why you're so I against cannot. that. <laughs> chicken. Well, I, I do remember the incident, and um, I guess listen. <laughs> Listen, I, I am very old school in that regard, and I believe that man has to be a man. He has to take care of the woman. If you're homesick, maybe I went a little overboard with the chicken noodle soup. I don't remember the exact <laughs> circumstances of that. I'm not sure of that, but uh, whatever it is, I like to see 
your boyfriend, your husband, your relationships catering to you and not having you cater to them. Not yet. You know, maybe once you're married, uh, they prove themselves as a different story. But initially... But um, what if they're, like, really not feeling good? Why is it a problem to want to take care of them? Because well, they're not supposed to show any kind of emotion. They're just supposed to always be... That's not normal, though. I, I agree with that. Like, you were really upset with me. And well, I was really bothered by it because it didn't make any sense to me. If well, you love someone and they're sick, you take care of them because that's what you would want them to do for you. Well, he, well, he's supposed to do that for you. That I agree with, thousand you percent. Do Bring the you same chicken thing. soup and everything else that, that he should, because he's supposed to get sick, get over with, and get back on his feet and go out to work. That's how I look at it. Okay? There's no such thing. Get, get going. No, not not yet. You could save the, you know, help me out to stuff till later on. Right now. I'm like that too, I but it's not always though. good. I disagree. But you're, you're like that. We're the same way though. Yes. Yeah, we'll get surgery, walk around the next day and probably kill ourselves. So it's not a good thing. Well. Yeah, I gotta have a healthy, healthy balance. Look, I have to, and, and the same with your, I, I happen to like Patrick. That's her, her boyfriend. Uh, you know, I like him. Um, I haven't fully given my seal of approval yet because I, I, I just get, I need more time. We've got to see how this goes. But I just think you want, you want men to always be like, Superman and unbreakable and never show like, their real self or like have emotions or have a bad day or like They're human. You guys are human, too, and it's okay, and you're so against it and like I Think you need to be a little more open to It's okay for someone to not always be I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm perfect. I'm great. I'm this I'm that I can do everything I'm Superman sometimes you're just not and that's okay too. Okay, but they don't have to show you that. They can be, you know, unsuperman like to themselves, you know, but they don't have to show you that. They, ha they, ha they, ha no, they have to be strong with you all the time. That's that's not. I kind, I see what you're saying. Like I kind of because when somebody's sick, but that's because I'm like you. So if my ex-husband was sick, I would get your shit together. I have no time for you. However, I don't want my son to be that way because I don't think it's I don't think it's worth it in the end. They sh you don't have to be like milking it, but it's okay to be like, I just, I'm not there, or like, or I need a moment, or have yeah. somebody take care of you or hold you. Maybe that'll soften you up in the, you don't have to be soft, but it'll just, you know, you can't be afraid to show emotion as a man. Mm -hmm. I think that's like even like more macho. Okay, but there's a time for that. Well, you know, when? Right now, well, not, you know, maybe you're later sick? on. No, I mean, when you're sick, you say, look, I'm not feeling well. You know, I'll see, see you tomorrow. See you in two days. That's all, you know, I'm, <laughs> if I'm, I'm alive, okay. just check on me. Yeah. If you're allowed to, text me. Yeah. yeah. SOS. Well, we can agree <laughs> Yeah, but, but you see, you're, you're a little overboard because you have a tendency to mother and to baby and to go way out of your way. Am I right or wrong? But I'm, that's my personality. I understand though. that, but that, that spoils the guy. Then he's going to expect it all the time. <laughs> Oh, I'm not feeling good, Jules. Help me. You, you, that's <laughs> not it. Okay, that's he's gonna ex true. he's gonna expect that all the time. Right now, you gotta say, hey, like like your sister just said, get your stuff together, get going. Next question. Next question. I don't. Okay, I kind of have a mob question. Okay. It's not really a hard question. Well, it's like a two part. No, I actually have three questions. Should I pick one? I should. Pick one. Um, okay, just quick response. The first question is, let's say this was like the old school kind of like succession, right? If you had to pick one of your seven children, sex oh aside. God, what's with you picking out of all of them? I just want, because I like to know, I like to know. Like if you had to pick one person to take on the family business, if you stayed there, who would you pick out of your seven children? Sex oh, aside. Yes, sex aside, 100% would be you, Amanda. Really? Yes. That was going to be a cop. I don't, I don't like crime. I'm against it. Uh <laughs> I understand that, but if, 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 push came if to I can shove, get you to agree to take over the family business, then it would be you. Oh, my Because I know they, neither one of them would want to do it. What about the two of us together? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I, I hate to say this, but your brother has told me, you know, Dad, where's all your money buried? I'll gladly go get it. I'll do two, three years in prison. I'll come home. He said, look, I can do it. I have no problem. Uh, and, and he's serious. I know. He's very serious. But the boss that's okay. not happening. Huh? Boss and underboss. Yeah, you could be the underboss. Let John no, be the boss. Oh, okay, fine. That, don't I really do all the work, though? Probably, okay. yes. Okay, that was a funny one. My serious question is, okay, there's been a lot of, like, loss with you and your family. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know, do you, do you regret? If loss. you could do it all over again, like loss with your family and your sister and your brother and your mom. Oh. Hard question. I mean, I think... 
you kind of like the sins of the father, right? Hope, like luckily all seven of us have been kind of blessed and we're still, I sometimes I'm like, I think about that, like the sins of the father, like honestly when I cancer, I'm like, not just you, but I'm like, oh shit, like does this happen? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, was it, you can't really say if it's worth it, but would, if you had to start all over again to that day when they said, are you gonna join or are you gonna go and be the doctor that you wanted to do? Would well, you change you, it? That, that's a great question and, and remember, you know, what I always try to tell everybody, the reason I got involved in that life was really to help my dad. It wasn't because I aspired to be in the mob all my life. I mean, I was an athlete in school, I was a pre-med student, and I had no thoughts of becoming part of that life. And, uh, but my dad promoted me for it. He said, if you're gonna be on the street to help me, this is the best way to do it. So I loved him so much that I got involved. In retrospect, Knowing what I know now and knowing the family that I would have and knowing how destructive that life is to family, especially my own, destroyed, I wouldn't do it. So, yes, I have many, many regrets and you guys did suffer for it. I was away for a long time and we got hurt in many, many different ways trying to build our life back together. That took years. So um, I would not do it again. No. Knowing what I know now. Even uh, as much as I love my dad, I would have had to figure it out another way. Hmm. You can say that, but then that way is what brought you to this way, maybe. Like maybe if you hadn't done that, maybe you wouldn't have met mom and maybe you wouldn't have gone to where you were today. Well, that, that's true. So you can have some regret, but also still it turned out pretty good, I would say. Well, I, you know, it turned out so good for me. You can't regret the whole life. No, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't regret some of the, I mean, you know, independent of that question, I don't regret some of the times that I had in that life. I don't regret some of the I would say the, the pain and suffering and the loss, yeah. especially your siblings and your mom yeah. and what she went through. That's, you know, yeah, you're the I mean, last I, living, well, not, but you're kind of the last musketeer left. I am. Your I brother am. who's not really involved um, anymore. My brother's, so. my brother's, you know, had a lot of hard times. I mean, my sisters have passed and uh, my mother's gone and she had a very tough life. And our relationship suffered as a result of my being involved in that life, even though we patched it up. Same with my dad. So, but that life is just very destructive, you know, and it's the reason I left because I didn't want to put your mother through what my family went through. And because uh, if I had stayed in, we wouldn't be here talking right now. There's no doubt about that. So, it's so hard to look back and say, if I could do it all over again, I would do it this way. It's, it's very hard. We can't change what happened in the past. We can only move forward and do as best as we can. And, you know, hopefully um, I do that most of the time. I mean, sometimes not so good, but as often as I can try to do the right thing, I do. I guess it's like kind of piggybacking off of that. Um, it's like a two-part question, but so I feel like a lot, like I, I generally think that we're all close and I think that we are all somewhat close to you as and all my friends was like, oh, you're always with your family, you see your family so much, you spend so much time with your family. But do you think that we are like emotionally all as close as like say our relationship, I feel like. I'm close as in, I, I know you're always there. I can text you if I need you. I say I love you, I hug you, I kiss you, I see you all the time. But like on a deeper level, I feel like we're not as close as we could be. And I guess one of my question is like, do you regret kind of doing so much for us that we've somewhat, I, I guess I'm kind of throwing this all under the bus when I say this, have come like, have come to rely on you even in our older age where um, we might not have this super amazing relationship like on an emotional level but like you're always there for me and I know that you're always there for me so I feel like instead of taking these huge risks and like jumping off and being like I have to do this because if I fail I have nothing in my head I'm always like if I fail Dad's I have there. my dad if this doesn't work out, I have my dad. If this, you know, kind of, it's it's kind of that mentality where you see people that people have made it and like have built themselves from the ground up. Like they didn't have a dad like you. They didn't have that, that you know, fallback plan. And I feel like, you know, I'm 35 years old and sometimes I wish like, or it's so weird to say, cause I'm so grateful for everything. She wanted to be pushed a little that, bit like, more. 
I I didn't have that net that safety net because I feel like I would have done so much more so I feel like I don't even know where my I think my question got lost in everything I, I, I think I got it I think I understand but like it. do you regret kind of doing so much for us in that way and like always saying you know I'm here whenever you need me I have this I'm going to take care of you whenever we did get in trouble you did bail us out whether it was like you shouldn't have done this but I'm going to bail you out kind of a thing as opposed to Figure it out. Just being like, figure it out. Yeah. Like the more tough Enabling. love. And I think for you, because you're more sensitive, you act like tough love, but like you're, it's really hard for you to, even with Michael that one time. You're a big you enabler. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just thought that's the. Question. It's not a question. <laughs> I, I, I understand what you're saying. I think. That's look, like a long word. I, I, like, I like the fact that you, you have the relationship with me that you know that you can depend on me no matter what if there's a problem. I, I, I'm not that way to make you reliant on me. That's not, you know, I want you to be independent and I want you to do well on your own and I want to help you get there. And I want you to know that no matter what, you know, if you have a problem, I'm going to be there for you as long as, you know, God allows. But I have that emotional connection with you. I don't express it every day. We're not, you know, because you have your lives to live. It was up to me, it'd all be living at home, you know? And I would have a big place and everybody would have their own house within 10 yards of me and we'd see each other all day long. That's how I would love to live. But, you know, that would be me imposing myself on you. We're not gonna do that. But, um, you know, my, my emotional connection with all of you is definitely there, same as your mom's is. Um, you know, how we express it all the time, I, I don't know. Do you think it's a little bit, do you think it's a little bit of guilt? You know, I don't know if it's guilt. I mean, I just feel that's who I am. I mean, that's my responsibility. I mean, how do you turn your back on your children, you know? No, but sometimes letting them fall is like really doing the best for them in the future. Yeah, well, you know, I know. I mean, I, I tried that, but it's hard too. <laughs> <laughs> we tried that and we came crawling. Yeah, I mean, I tried letting you fall, but I, it, it's kidding. hard for me to allow that. Yeah. To allow myself to do that, huh? you know? Yeah, no, we were just kidding. <laughs> But, you know, look, I, I, my prayer for my girls is that, number one, you are independent. All of you can take care of yourself to a large degree. But whoever you end up with, I hope, is the man in the family, and he does the major job. That's how I believe it. That's how life was constructed to be. You know, modern times, things change a little bit and all this, you know, stuff, but... The man is supposed to be the man, and that's not taking anything away from women's or women's rights or all this stuff that we're hearing today. But a man has to be who he is and provide for his family. It's biblical. I hate that. I, I know, but, I love that. but that's I not taking that. away from your ability do. to do for yourself. If you want to be independent, fine, but you shouldn't be connected to a guy who can't, tr who can't take care of you. How could you say you like that when you want to take care of what's his name um, so much? Like bringing him soup, that is taking care of him. But what does that have to do with him being the man of the house and being the sole provider? Well, he's provider? technically the man of the house if he's your husband, but I don't think he should be the sole provider. I feel like when you have one, like you're dependent too much, it should be equal. You shouldn't have to need that person. You should want to be with that person. It shouldn't be like, I need, like, of course you guys need each other at certain points, but it's also nice to be like, I can stand on my own two feet by myself. I'm with you because I want to be with you, not because I have to, or because I can't sur survive without you. Or I can't provide for myself without you. That's a little bit more that. like not an old school okay. thing, I don't but I'm I'm also uh, 10 I'm, years divorced and now I'm, I'm like I'm all for having your own thing and having if you want to do this you don't have to get permission you can go do it if you want to go on a girls week and you can go do it that's not but about I that. don't think that you should, that the woman should be the sole provider of the house no but well, why not I think they your income be. that you have could be a bonus and it could help and you can add to the family and you could you know if you want to do special things for them or if you decide oh I'm gonna take us away for the weekend but I believe that the man should be the sole provider that's also because you've been living with dad for a long time. No, I think. no, you listen, live I, with dad too I, and have your own opinions. I, I, no, no, I, let me, let me, I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with you being financially independent, having your own life, your own job. But if you're going to marry somebody, that person should be in the position to take care of you 100. Yes. percent Yeah. That's yeah. What you saying. don't. You can supplement it. You can yeah, have your own you money. Can you can it, have you can, your own career. If you want to go buy But he should be in the position. That's a man's job. That's all I'm saying. Do you agree? 
So if one day you say, you know what, I don't want to go to work for two weeks. I want to stay home or I want to retire for a year. If you don't have a man, if you don't have a man that can handle that, what's, what, 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 what do you need him for? That's like a thing that you want to hope for. I mean, yes, there's maternity leave and all that. You don't have to quit your job just because you have a kid. But I would like to have that kind of security where it's yeah. like, you know, I love to work and I enjoy it. But we're not living solely on my income. That I definitely don't No, know. that I would be totally <laughs> against that. That would be, I, the guy would have not no respect for me at that point. I'll be honest with you. But we can all agree to disagree. If you had to support the guy, what do you need him for? That's mean. <laughs> well, that no. is mean because you're in. What, you don't, no, what you don't benefit is he? You marry the man because he's paying for your life. No, you but. Marry the man because you're he, in love with him and you want okay, to do Okay, but him. how could you love him if he can't support you? Isn't that part of it? Hey, he's a man. He when can take care older, of me. When you get older, yes. When you are in that position oh, and God. you are with someone and you realize <laughs> they can't take you to dinner and they can't do those things for you, your love will somewhat be questioned. Heck um, yeah. Sorry. You have a, love is not I enough. Kind of normal feelings. But you're not just with the man because he's no. paying for you. No, it's but if no. at the end of the month you can't well, pay you your can't, mortgage when or you're your broke rent, you're and tired believing. and you have two kids and he's broke too, you're like, get get out of my face. I agree, but the Goodbye. statement of if he can't pay for you, then what do you need him for? I don't like that statement. No, no, no. What, why, if he can't support you, what do, what do you need him for? But you're also you like 22 years why old. would you love him if he That's can't support different. you? you gotta how could like, you love somebody that? Uh, how could you love a man, a man why do this? that can't take care of you? It's just how, no. I'm saying, but how can you? You have the biggest. How can you fall in love with a man that cannot provide and take care of you? It's that's not a man. Oh, Dad. <laughs> Wait a second. If a man like can't put it, I don't like this. Okay. I don't like this. Well, I can't. I can't. Why be with that person if they can't pay for you? If this not not pay for you, support take you, provide you. for you, take care of you. There's a difference on all levels, though, not just financially. All, well, of course, just all being levels. A man of course, and you and have to rely on him for everything. Support and everything, yeah. but especially financial support. If he can't handle you that way, what do you need him for? I don't like that statement. I agree with all. that. If they're not contributing, then what do you need them for? Not even contributing. They have to be able to do it on their own. And if they can't, well, then you got to move on. You got you got to move on because it, it doesn't make sense at that point. But also, you, you can also question. build a life together. And yes. You don't, you don't have to marry like a super wealthy man who no, already has it. No, you can start absolutely. off young and you can build and you can both But the grow difference is, is you're so young. Together. Yes, you're coming from a different place. You're starting out your life at 21, 22. So yes, you guys can grow together. So don't take that personally because you're young. Yeah. But when you're 30, 35, 40, I mean, you don't have time to grow your life. You're already there. So yeah, you're coming from a different place. That of course makes what sense. I, what I am trying to tell you, trust me when I tell you this, you could live on love and no love when you're broke no, no. it sucks you no. can't but at, when you get married at the end of the month okay when you can't pay the rent or your phone gets shut off or your car payment is late and all this stuff things the start to change meter starts going down there. the hotness meter is like yes then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna look at the guy differently you're gonna say hey what's up man fine i've had financial stress with you and mom that's what that's I'm saying. Makes, like, it makes you see everything how harder. it makes everything Family's worse. So it's like, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. You still love dad. You still love mom. But like those things make everything so much harder. So it's like, yeah, you might be so in love with this person. But trust me, when that stuff is happening, things are just. And I think everybody will agree with that. Not the same. And yeah, that's that, just the reality. Yes. You, you right. like, you don't need to be a millionaire, but you need to be able to handle yourself. Exactly. And for all you ladies out there, please don't get the wrong impression. When I, I'm speaking on your behalf, the way I am for my daughters, I'm going to be with a guy, he's got to be able to handle his business. That's all I'm saying. Yes, you can go through rough times. Yes, you can have financial issues. Yes, you can be unemployed. Yes, you can go through a pandemic and money gets tight. But hopefully he doesn't sit around and mope around and say, what am I going to do next? You know, he gets himself motivated and he says, hey, I got a wife to support, I got a family to support, I got a girlfriend to take care of, and you got to get into action somehow. And hopefully the woman will support him in that regard. But, um, you know, I want to be careful because, you know, you're a male chauvinist. I'm not a male chauvinist. Trust me, I'm not in that regard. But I just think a man has to be a man, independent of a woman. That's just who a man has to be, period. He's got to know that, hey, I have to take care of this woman, I have to take care of my family, and that's it. And that's what I want for you. And yeah, I'd be very disappointed if you, you made a choice and that's not what's happening for you because you're going to suffer over it. I want to say this before we go further. 
okay, I'm, I'm going to be doing something in the next couple of months, but my, my daughter, Mikkel, here, both of these two here, excellent trainers, okay, and, and I, they each have a specialty. I don't know exactly what it is because they try to get me to the gym, and it's too hard for me, honestly. They, they really work you out. But um, they're going to be offering something, you know, virtually fairly soon to all of you. And um, uh, I would suggest that you pay close attention because it's going to be a great program that we're putting together along with my platform. And I think you're going to enjoy it. And this young lady here is a renowned makeup artist and an esthetician. She's going out of school for it. Uh, she's also doing some acting, going to be part of a television series that I'm involved in. So, you know, fortunately, all of them have been independently uh, strong in that regard, that they've gone out and done their own thing and they've succeeded in it. And I'm proud of all of them in that regard. As a matter of fact, you know, in some ways they were jumped a little ahead of my boys, but my boys are, are doing okay now too, so. Girls are always ahead of the boys. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Am I, I, I'm probably- You're pro girl all the way. Yes. No, I don't need no man. Take care. Of me. <laughs> no, you do, but I've been there. I, 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 yes, of course you want a broke guy. That sucks. But you don't want to be like, both of you should be ambitious in building your life together yes. and support. You can weather storms together, but sitting there and like, that's a different story. I think it's more of a mindset, not like financially what you bring to the table. If you're both aggressive at like making a life for each other, then you will and you'll succeed. Yes, and I, I want to say another thing, because these are questions that I get asked and I'm being stimulated now in thought process, you know. Um, I was away for eight years, and I was out of their life, basically, because they visited me when they did visit me, and, um, you know, we got on a phone call, and we can get on a phone call, but, you know, for eight of their formative years, their young years, I was out of their life, and we had to kind of rebuild that. Not, not her, because I was home for, her, for Julia, but we had to kind of rebuild that, you know, and... I found out one thing, you know, it's hard work for a parent to um, really take care of their child when there's been that kind of separation. But I also found out that uh, children want to love their parents. You got to give them a reason not to. Uh, they want to love, it's just a natural thing. They want to love their parents. And, and sometimes we have to work harder at it because of a situation or a circumstance that we created in their life. And certainly, you know, I take responsibility for, for going to prison and doing the things that I did. But we've been very fortunate that through all the stuff that we've gone through, and we've gone through a lot, struggles, challenges, a lot of stuff went on in the past 20 some odd years that we've been able to hold it together as a family. I attribute our, our faith in the Lord. You know, my wife being a very strong and dominant figure in the house to hold everything together when I was away and through all the struggles that we've had. But, you know, it's tough in this day and age. It's, it's tough to, to keep a family together and, and to succeed in a way. So we feel very blessed, at least I do. Um, you know, hopefully they do also. Yes. Totally. So um, I hope you enjoy this. You know, we just we didn't have anything formal today. We're just wrapping back and forth, and uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna continue to do this every once in a while because I have a family, and a family is a big part of my life, and I want everybody to know. And you've been very very supportive of me on YouTube. We have a lot of content that you can go and look uh, at all these different YouTube channels. And the fact that we have now, I think, over 425,000 subscribers in a very short period of time. We're growing every day. We're providing, um, you know, a, a content that we think is meaningful to you as long as, uh, as well as being entertaining. So hopefully you're enjoying that. Uh, MichaelFrancis.com, you know, our crew and our platform. We have over 13,000 people at this point involved in it. Again, growing every day, putting a lot of great content in there, a lot of encouragement. The way people are interacting with one another to encourage one another, especially through this pandemic, has been such a blessing and so uplifting to me. And we're now today, as of today, we launched a, uh, a higher platform where there's a lot of personal business and life coaching one-on-one uh, -on -one with me and my team. And uh, we have people jumping on board for that. So stay tuned. Um, got a lot of good things coming up and I'm glad you get a chance to meet my family. Slices, Newport Beach, we're opening up in about two weeks. We just got our permits today, believe it or not. You know, after a year, I don't want to talk about Orange County, but anyway, we got that. We got two places in LA now and we're starting to expand all over the place. We're getting a lot of people coming in wanting to be franchisees. We're going over all of that. So things are looking really good. So um, that's it. Any last, you know, parting shots at me, a dad, you know, this is it. I mean, 
Um, and again, I, I, you know, I, I have to say this, I don't, I don't think any of my daughters are available, so I get a lot of applications last time around, some I threw right out. Just to, yeah, one like that's them. available. Um, oh yeah, God. but <laughs> you got to get past me, so re remember that. Um, but anyway, no, that's, that's, uh, that's about it for today. So any parting shots? Um, Where's just, dinner? <laughs> Where's dinner? No, yes. Thank you for setting the standard of man very high. And for us all thank aiming and in it. Thank you. And I was going to say <laughs> no, thank you thank and you. no thank you. Exactly. You are not thanking you. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a, we'll yeah, it's a. I'm going to take nation. that as a, as a thank you from all of my loving daughters. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you heard the first Yes. Well, you may, we all aim high. Well, that's good. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, how do I always leave all of you? Be safe. Be healthy. God bless. And I will see you next time.